All right, Doombots, we are finally going to review a team I'm very excited. Uh, we are finally going to review the Spider-Verse, or specifically the Symbiote Spider-Verse team. Now, you know how this works. Availability, usability, breakpoints. Some advice on Tier 4s, yada, yada, yada. We've done this before. One thing I want to say at the very beginning before we do anything else, every single character on this team is okay to pretty good without symbiote spider-man with symbiote spider-man every single character on this team becomes great even regular spider-man he's the worst member of this team and he's still pretty good on this team without symbiote spider-man this isn't a team i'm going to say that again if you don't have symbiote spider-man he will not be replaced. This entire conversation is going to be around Symbiote Spider-Man and how he makes this team work, where he makes them work, and more or less how good they are as a team overall. Keep this in mind as we discuss things like availability and usability, and at the end when I give him a rating, because without Symbiote Spider-Man, this team is just characters that are pretty okay. That said, we can go straight into an availability conversation as soon as I start a blitz fight. This team is incredibly weird when it comes to putting them together. Four of the characters have been in this game for pretty much the entire length of the global launch of the game. Carnage has been the last character added to this team. Well, obviously besides Symbiote Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man was a day one character. Miles was released in, around the same time as Venom when they first introduced the strike raids Alpha and Beta. More or less, this entire team kind of existed, but once Symbiote Spider-Man came out, uh, it brought them all together. Venom is a node farmable character right now, easy to access. Carnage is a war store character, and up until recently it was a very low priority one, especially considering the fact that while he was used to unlock Shuri on her first pass, since that time it became easier to get uh, some of the other Spider-Verse characters, specifically the Sinister Six, and not really worry about Carnage. Spider-Man is a Blitz store character, all in all a pretty decent pickup, it's very easy to get him early game he's usable but he really doesn't break out uh, he has a great kit but he starts falling off the later you get into the game leading miles who's also a blitz character but you're gonna probably end up with more mile shards through random blitz orbs than anything else he doesn't need much he's really a kit character he doesn't do a lot of damage his investment pretty much just make sure his focus stuff lines up he doesn't need a lot to be great uh, Symbiote Spider-Man, however, has no major availability. If he did, this would be a very different video. Symbiote Spider-Man is currently only available during a milestone event. We are, we are currently in the middle of a second of three, so there are chances you have to get him, but because he's a long-term event that keeps coming back, and because you can't really get him reliably, he's one of those unavailable characters unless you get lucky or spend money or plan very accordingly for the events when they come. Uh, and after the milestone's over, we don't really know what's going to happen to him. He might go into milestone orbs. We'll find out. So as far as available, uh, four of the five members of this team are relatively available easy. The fifth member and the most important member of the team being Symbiote Spider-Man not so much, so if you get Symbiote Spider-Man, congratulations, this team is a team you can work on, even if you only have him at 3 star. If you don't, well, this is not a team. It's four characters. And they're good, and you can get good use out of them, but you can't really replace Symbiote Spider-Man. He's actually the only one you can't replace on this team. So, usability. Uh, everywhere. All the time always this team can be anywhere you put them if you get a early symbiote spider-man because of the milestones when you start playing the game and you invest in carnage venom miles and even spider-man himself uh he, that's your arena team that's your arena defense they will 
probably hold pretty well, even in front of the defenders. If uh, you want to use raids, great. Symbiote Spider-Man makes this entire team a self-sustaining raid heal team. Absolutely phenomenal. You can replace Spider-Man with a dedicated healer or basically anything you want. Ultimately, this team will do any raid that they're allowed to do. U6, U7, doesn't matter. One of the best teams early, one of the best teams mid-game, one of the best teams late game. All in all, phenomenal. War, whatever you want. Put him on defense, let someone figure it out. Put him on offense, uh, you can make a quick swap, you can put Green Goblin in, and then they can beat Hydra, confirmed. Uh, they're pretty good at just beating up random teams. I haven't necessarily tested mine against Asgardians, but people have told me they beat the Asgardians. I'll believe them. This team is just all around great. Everywhere. Blitz team, doesn't matter. Great. Team's great. So, because their usability is literally every aspect of the game right now, there's no reason to go into detail. They just are one of the most usable teams. So we're going to make this usability part really short. We're going to go straight into tier 4 conversation. And a bunch of people are going to be really mad at me when I talk about it. But I don't think there's many tier 4s this team needs in order to do what it's supposed to do. I think there are tier 4s that make this team stronger. But I don't think there's any uh, many necessary. I think maybe 2 or 3 total necessary tier 4s. Anyway, let's start with the worst character on this team actual spider-man of course he's the worst character in this team you get him for free why would anything you get for free be good uh no major notes slightly more dodge chance your spider-man doesn't dodge and you know that only the ai spider-man dodges decent chunk of damage on the slow and stun the old meh uh chaining to one additional person okay maybe for raids it'll help with the defense down but not that much not when symbiote spider mans going to be going faster and agile attack damage with a higher chance of getting evade but it's not a hundred percent it just goes up to 60 almost no tier fours uh, in spider-man you can argue for the two middle pieces web swinger and tangled web probably not uh, my Spider-Man is a little bit stronger than uh, uh, even I would like him to be because I don't use him on this team But maybe if you have high red stars or you really like Spider-Man, he might be a little bit better for you He's just not necessary and none of his investments really jump out uh, Miles on the other hand absolutely amazing character uh, complete kit character Amazing how many things he can do there was a period of time when Ultron just started showing up when there was only a couple hundred people with Ultron. Miles was part of the kit that would constantly beat him. And it was mostly just Venom Shock and Web Blast. So looking at Ultimate Spidey. So this is one of the abilities that I would have already upgraded had I ever read it prior to me preparing for this video because I never had to because I never saw that it was on turn. This ability is absolutely amazing. When you're on the full Spider-Verse team, it basically says whenever he takes a turn, he just applies defense down to a random target. He just does. As opposed to just immediately on the beginning of a fight, he just always puts defense down. And if they happen to have it already from one of the other kits, he gains offense up and his next attack's gonna be great. This is one of his best kit abilities, uh, and that defense down is not to be ignored, especially for raid content totally worth investing in web blast damage and uh apply disrupted to two additional targets instead of one so it's the main target plus one or the main target plus two this is your choice if you really want to take the chance you're welcome to uh in raids it doesn't seem to matter too much as long as it applies to the main character that's fine it also doesn't extend the turns it's just immediate ultimately it's your choice you don't need to venom shock uh, it's totally fine at 6. The slow, prolonged negative effects and 50% speed bar is 100% why this character is amazing. Uh, you can use early game to uh, slow down Luke Cage to the point where he won't put defense up on his team, and then you can pick them off before he does. Even if he does, your spider Miles is likely to lap him and put disrupt on at least him or maybe other characters. So you lead with Venom Shock a lot. You could target 
Ultron and make sure he doesn't get to summon minions immediately while you pick off the characters or him twice. The sky is the limit and space is the place. This is one of the best single target abilities ready on turn one and his speed does not hurt. Quick strike, target has defense down, clear three positive effects, all does increase damage. At six, it's totally adequate. You don't have to worry about that. Oh no, great character. Venom, another character that doesn't need much. Do you know how I know that? Because I have a gear tier 10 Venom and I don't think he's ever died. Venom has some of the best base stats in the game, regardless of my ridiculous red stars, but more or less just pay attention to the power of Venom. Uh, because I got high red stars, I didn't have to put as much investment in him to make him good. He's just naturally great. Symbiosis on turn, heal 10% of this character's max health. If his health is greater than 95%, apply defense up for two turns to self and all symbiote allies. Gain 100% focus if a Spider-Verse character is present. Duh, right? The only thing that matters is whether it goes to 10. Is it worth an extra 5% health? Maybe in U7, but not for 95% of the other content you're going to be doing. So not necessary. If you notice your Venom's not uh, giving out defense up all the time, maybe you want to make sure he heals up a little, but... That's your call. Corruption, no notes, doesn't matter. Just increases damage. Everything it's supposed to do, uh, it does already at six. Seven, it just makes it hurt a little bit more. But Venom doesn't do a lot of damage on the front end. All of Venom's damage comes from the bleed stacks. Uh, Violate, uh, you get a little bit more bleed. Uh, it doubles the turn meter on bleed. So it's a stack of three bleeds over two turns. That character's dead well before, probably. Uh, it's mostly the ability block, the, the fact that you can make sure a character's not taking an action that turn. Uh, they don't really need the extra stack. They'll be dead before that. But if you like seeing big damage numbers, by all means, uh, Maul is Venom's actually best ability. Uh, basic attack, apply bleed, then flip two positive effects to negative effects. This attack cannot be dodged. It could be missed, Venom could be blinded, this attack cannot be dodged. He's really good at, at messing up Spider-Man. He's really good at messing up Vision. It... This is one of the best basics in the game, not because it's a dispel, it's because it's a flip. And so many characters, with the bleed, uh, just amazing. All this does is increase the damage and of course the bleed stack damage, but no notes there. So next we'll talk about Carnage. Carnage is almost perfect as far as characters go. I'm going to start in the exact reverse, unlike anything else. Cleave, damage, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Carnage is the main damage dealer of the team, so the, the higher damage he does, the better everything's going to be. But the biggest downside to Carnage is he loses a lot of that extra damage and why he's so good if no one has debuffs. That's one of his downsides. So... As far as his basic is concerned, if you're using everything right and everything's going completely perfectly, this is going to be great. If there's a JJ on the other team or a Ronin, eh, things might not go so well for you. This is one of those situational investments. If you like seeing big numbers, that's the only time I would recommend it. This attack is crazy. Uh, I've seen this attack hit for 500,000 before. <laughs> this attack is serious uh, because what it does is it takes a base number of damage which is 350 he does a lot of damage he's a very high damage character plus 100 additional damage per negative effect on the opponent if the opponent has defense down uh, it doesn't remove defense down before the effects take place so if a character has defense down it locks in the amount of damage it was supposed to do and then applies it after taking the defense down off. It's kind of like eats the stacks and throws them back. This attack with a character that has four, five, or six debuffs, not stacks of debuffs, not multiple turns, but separate debuffs, this attack can do uh, any amount of health. Whoever the strongest and most healthy character is, he could, it could, it could one-shot anyone at any time based on the number of debuffs. So it, it's best to save this. It also does an arbitrary amount of damage to the, the surrounding characters. This is, this is the nuke, right? This is what you do when you set up for it and you make sure, this is the Captain Marvel O. This is how you make sure one character gets eliminated. Pretty good, so because this is most important setup, 
an extra 70% damage uh, on both the main attack and the adjacent attacks, it's going to be huge. So give it a shot if you like. It's just big damage numbers, not necessary. Absolute Carnage is his turn one ult. Attack primary target for 420 piercing damage, up to 500 damage. Uh, apply two bleed for two turns. Very, very strong bleed stacks. If the primary target is above 50% health, they get three bleed stacks. Now, of course, these are all focus and resistance checks. Sometimes it might not work depending on the target, whether they have defense up, etc., etc. That said, this is a lot of damage, both on the front end and on the back end when that character takes a turn. So you have to be a little careful with when you choose to use it, but ultimately it's gonna hurt when it does. Uh, it's also great to set it up with how the rest of his kit works, but all of it and all of everything is kind of held together by his last ability, Frenzied Fury. When an enemy drops below 25% health, change the speed bar of self and all symbiote allies by 30%, and heal for 10% of this character's max health. Since all your guys are doing is a ton of damage immediately, it's so much more likely that he's going to be taking extra turns. Not only him, but the rest of his characters. And I've seen many turns happen where these three symbiote characters basically just can't help because of how many different people they're hitting with their attacks because it does trigger each individual enemy. This is almost as mandatory on this team as something like Thanos' passive on the BKT or Black Panther's passive on any team, but mostly the Wakandans, Magneto's passive on the Brotherhood. This is probably the most important, uh, maybe the second most important, individual tier four you can invest in i would recommend uh, the second you complete the team not outside of the team again if you don't have symbiote spider-man this doesn't do as much but when this team is complete that ability for those three symbiotes absolutely absolutely devastating and last but not least symbiote spider-man cannot stress enough he is the most important part of this team without him this doesn't work and the reason why is perfect host in raids and dark dimension when a negative effect is applied to an enemy, heal self in Hero Spider-Verse and all symbiote allies for 3% of this character's health. That's per effect. I'm not going to do the math on this for you. It's a lot. Always. It's never 3%. It's often 3% multiple times, like 3 or 4 times, 9, 12%. It's a lot of casual healing. Gain 100% drain. Symbiote allies gain 100% drain. Whenever they do damage, they gain that much health back. They all do damage. This is amazing. Uh, that's only in Raids and Dark Dimension. Outside of it, 15% dodge chance, 10% max health, Hero Spider-Verse and Symbiote Allies gain 10% max health. This investment, which a lot of people have told me is the most important, I don't agree, but it is good. It just cha it doesn't give him 30, I don't believe. It gives them 20. It just goes from 10 to 20. Uh, even though it does say gain plus 20, it already says gain plus 10. They're bad at words. Fox Next doesn't word well. Uh, that said, it's, an, it's a good increase. You know, if you're using this as your primary raid team, don't worry, you can do it. It'll be fine. Seems okay, especially in Dark Dimension. If you really want to use it for Dark Dimension 3, you're probably going to need it. But other than that, it doesn't seem that necessary for me. Web Slam. Uh, slow all targets for two turns. Your team takes all of the turns. Having them slowed for two turns? Eh. You're already going to lap most players. They don't need it. By the time they would take their second turn, you could probably do this attack again. It's only five energy, and you do take a lot of extra turns. That said, it's a little bit more damage, and since it hits every single character... That 40% means a little bit more than something that would ever be a single target. So, go nuts. I'll probably end up investing in this later. Just not yet. Spider Swingshot. This is one that I do believe you should always invest in as soon as you decide to make this team your major team. But scan specifically, at least the three symbiotes, this team. 40% uh, extra damage, no problem. 
uh, always apply bleed to each target that is incredibly huge uh, each target having all negative effects prolonged will proc his heal going from 50 percent chance to always apply bleeds absolutely incredible since this team is just constantly taking extra turns and since bleed does count as a character going under x health absolutely this ability is super important when you're trying to use this as a raid team uh, it doesn't hurt that the heals make it better and another one that i think is a totally good investment would be right here uh, basically the damage doesn't matter but each hit applying a defense down for two turns well we've already seen what defense down can do on carnage's kit and on miles's kit so it's great great ability necessary i don't know if it's necessary it hasn't been necessary for me yet and i can do with this team as it is right now probably well i don't use this full team full disclosure i use the three symbiotes with graviton and scientist supreme uh, they also give debuffs what's you know why not and they heal and they can kind of sustain themselves that's the team i use for you seven when i have fun and i can do about my normal 60 percent fights so should be okay but ultimately any investment any tier four you put into him kind of like in the same conversation as characters like hella or black bolt you're not gonna regret he he carries his team standalone he's a phenomenal character on his team the stronger he is the stronger they become the, no notes right the break points for this team is very simple uh they are amazing at 100k they're phenomenal at 150k and every 50k you tag on top of them they just can do equally harder and harder content i would say that at about 80 to 100k this team is punching way up higher than it needs to be in, in u6 i think that probably around 200 to 250k you're going to start seeing dividends maybe with a little bit of a mishmash but overall good progress in u7 team is absolutely phenomenal because of that we're giving this an s tier team now what's different between this and the inhumans is while the three symbiotes are absolutely the meat and potatoes of the team spider-man and miles do contribute meaningfully to what this team is trying to do as opposed to the inhumans where yo-yo and black bolt really do the lion's share of the work and the other three are just present right now they don't even need to be there uh and when they are it's not necessarily better than if you had just taken three better characters like off the top of my head Thor, Hela, and Loki, or Shuri, Scientist Supreme, and Ultron, just saying. Other than that, this team is absolutely S tier. Whatever you use them for, you're going to be great. If you get Symbiote Spider-Man, do not regret investing in him and bringing up that team relatively. You will get great success. I promise you, if the day he becomes farmable, farmable, uh, I will do a different free-to-play series discussing how Forget the Defenders, forget the Guardians, go with Symbiote Spider-Man, do whatever you want after. Because once you unlock these guys, sky's the limit, space is the place. Other than that, that's pretty much everything I have to say about this team. So, do me a favor. Do you have Symbiote Spider-Man? Did you have the characters prior to him and their reworks? How much better did he make that team? If you don't, are you interested? If you have a very high investment in there, were there anything you regretted? Probably not. Comment below and let me know all of this stuff. I, I'm pretty confident Symbiote Spider-Man is one of the best characters they've released this year. Uh, of course, he's not legendary, so, but I think he's on par with, I would even say Captain Marvel as far as a milestone character that truly does change an entire facet of the game. I don't know if he's as powerful directly as she is, but when the player gets Symbiote Spider-Man, invest in the right characters, they're going to be okay. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll change my hat later.